Let's begin this way. The newly created Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited officially opened for business some two hours ago, having taken over the five collapsed local banks. Even before these banks will officially start work, customers of the now insolvent banks have been trooping uh, to the various branches to make withdrawals. We're live at these banks and we'll be bringing you updates uh, from some of its branches in Accra as well as Kumasi. Are there panic withdrawals by pro uh, as projected by some banking experts? We'll bring you that details uh, shortly as well. But how and why did these local banks get to this place? Could the rush to attain banking status be a contributory factor to the early collapse of some of these indigenous banks? Well, that's the observation of the CEO of Dalex Finance, Ken Thompson. Ken Thompson says that the latest development in the banking sector should teach small financial institutions to build their firms step by step and not try to cut corners. The important thing is making sure that our institutions, uh, you know, uh, our institutions uh, operate in a way that is proper. That's the most important thing. We must also be conscious of the fact that we need foreign direct investment, that's important. But we must also promote a national agenda. So I will not support a local institution that is not doing the wrong thing. I will support the Bank of Ghana if it promotes a national agenda, but also promotes foreign direct investment. That's the most important thing. Because ultimately, if the financial system collapses and the whole country goes down, it's got nothing to do with that it's local or foreign. Is that the system has collapsed? That's the most important thing. And uh, some of these uh, financial institutions, for instance, Beige was doing very well in the microfinance space. Um, did it jump the gun? Are, are we seeing the tendency where most of these microfinance companies want to rush to become a bank all of a sudden? Is that what we are seeing? It Beige appeared to be doing very well in the microfinance space. I don't know what it was doing. Uh, but there was um, some sudden desire by finance institutions to become banks. Uh, let me put on record that Dalex has no, no, I have no intention of becoming a bank. We'll probably become, we'll become a bigger financial institution, but not in the way that you see now. Uh, but then there was some push to become, uh, for finance companies to become banks. Uh, the, 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 the whole strategy at that time was that they could do larger transactions. Those transactions were all government business, were all government transactions, and so they could make more money. I mean, so, but of course, over the last few years, I mean, the government itself has been under pressure. You know, the government is the biggest contractor, is the biggest uh, lender, is the biggest, is the biggest borrower, is the biggest contractor, biggest employer. So now the government business is contracted, those banks would want to suffer because the business model was based on lending, doing business with government. So those was going to suffer. Why they did it, I don't know. CEO of Dalex uh, Finance uh, Company there. Meanwhile, pressure seems to be mounting on the Bank of Ghana to crack the whip on persons from its banking supervision department who may have contributed to the five commercial banks is being revoked. Three of the five struggling banks, Sovereign, Beige and Construction Banks, who had their uh, licenses revoked, are said to have used fictitious, non-existent capital and false pretense to obtain the license. There are equally calls for top managers of the collapsed banks to be investigated. And whilst the Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, says he is optimistic that the new Bank of Ghana measures to, uh, to deal with the troubled banks will strengthen the sector, the minority in Parliament says it will soon drive him before the House to answer questions. The minority spokesperson on finance, Kisela Tufosin, says Parliament is set to drag the finance minister and the governor of the Bank of Ghana before the House over the collapse of these banks. He was speaking to Raymond Aqua on Afrans, where the ranking member on the uh, finance committee also said that the two ought to answer why the state is putting a whopping seven billion into fixing the problems created by those banks. Proud to the media review, yeah. we engaged the governor. And um, um, let, let me say that um, it was a very interesting conversation. We had a very frank discussion with, with the governor uh, on some of this issue. Did he give specific um, uh, information he, that he, you are He gave us some basic information relating to the collapse of the two banks and then the approval they gave for the purchase and assumption uh, okay. transaction for GCB. So we asked some questions. They failed to give us some detail as to Unibank and the four banks. Um, that has just been um, collapsed. They failed okay. to give us that information. Um, um, we probe further because obviously we've heard others in the grapevine. Yeah. In fact, today I'm even hearing 
that if care is not taken, they will, uh, in the coming days or coming months, they will have to, no choice than to announce some, some, some few banks also going to the same line. I whether see. they will have to create another special purpose vehicle and give it to them, or they will join this um, consolidated bank of Ghana, uh, Bank uh, uh, Ghana Limited. It's another matter. I see. It's another matter. So um, we engage them. In fact, we've engaged the finance minister, the Honorable Ken Oforiata, on some of these issues. The only difficulty is when you meet them and you ask for questions, the, the answers doesn't come as you would like it to come. Because I, I believe that in discussions like this, we all have a responsibility to engage in a very frank discussion, frank conversations for us to know what exactly is wrong with the financial Michael, sector. Michael, of what has just happened, would you be willing to invite them and call them back in? It, it's, it's inevitable. Um, I'm going to make the request through that the chairman of the finance committee, um, right from here, and then I, I know um, he, he will, he's someone who has worked at the central bank before, mm -hmm. and he, he will be also interested in the matter. So I strongly believe that in the coming days, um, the, the Finance Committee of Parliament will be engaging the Governor of the Bank of Ghana and the Finance Minister for us to deliberate on issues that we are hearing today. Do you Okay, so lots of force and speaks for the minority on when it comes to finance. Now, the Bank of Ghana is saying it will forward its findings on operations of the five collapsed uh, collapse banks to the appropriate state authorities for further action. This is in response to several calls for prosecution of the shareholders and the directors of those banks who have, of course, uh, been cited by the Central Bank for poor corporate governance practices. Deputy Governor of the Bank, Elsie Awaji, spoke to uh, Daniel Dazi earlier on the Super Morning Show this morning. Well, we have said that we will look at what is available to us in our armory, uh, our regulatory armory. Uh, we may have administrative uh, powers to declare persons no longer fit and proper to do business uh, in the banking sector. Uh, we would, to the extent that we have appointed a receiver, we would ensure we would expect that they would pursue any recovery that they can they, they they can pursue within the court system or any other means that are lawfully allowed we would also be able to pass on all the findings of our, our investigation so far uh to the appropriate state agencies that are mandated to to investigate and to prosecute if need if if uh, if warranted so what we know is that there is a lot of um, a lot of wrongdoing on the part of individuals that that contributed to the collapse of these companies, and we will not stop at revoking their licenses. We would ensure that we pass on to the appropriate quarters what uh, needs to be followed up through, and we will be judgment. You said you are, you are passing on these documents of investigations done so far. When is this handing over being done? Who are you handing them over to? Well, that's still work that's ongoing, like I said. We've just appointed a receiver yesterday in the person of Mr. Nia Mano Doju. We're going to be working with them so that they can pursue all the civil uh, options that are uh, civil law options available to them, going to court and all of that. Uh, they would also take steps to report to their appropriate quarters guided by you know the findings of all the reports we have so far so that you know the appropriate appropriate agencies take uh, take up these matters when we're going to do that as soon as possible Elsie Awaji is the uh, uh, Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana. So you've heard what she had to say. That is the response from the Bank of Ghana, the official response from the Bank of Ghana. Does it give you any comfort as a customer of these banks or as a business person? When I return from this quick break, I have business persons and the finances for joining me for that discussion. Do stay. You're welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. As I indicated, I have two strong men. They've just described themselves as handsome to me behind the, uh, behind the scenes. But anyway, I have two men here. Amate, Amate, 
Oh, Amate Enim. Amate Enim. Amate Enim is a, poli is a uh, finance expert with the Policy Initiative for Economic Development. So you're welcome. I also you. have here Dr. Joseph Obeng, who is the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association. So you're welcome. Thank you. It's good to see you once again. Not long ago, we're talking about VAT. But what are the ripple effects of these actions that have been taken by the Bank of Ghana? Will this trigger uh, panic with Rowell as projected? Are people losing confidence in the local banking sector? We have been finding out from people on the street hear what they have to say and then when we come back to the studio we'll have a chat yes i do because i've been working with them for many years so i don't think if there is any challenge now that this is the time for us to wait and see what the outcome will be no i don't simply because it's not the first time the central bank or bank of ghana is taking over the local banks just quite recently about three four months we heard of the central bank taking over UT Bank and Capital Bank. And then we, they told us they were going to put in measures to, I mean, inject other local banks to shoot up. What happened? And these ones too are taking over. So invariable, there is no confidence. Yes, I have confidence in the local banks. And they have identified their weaknesses. So for them coming together, they're able to do something strong. Well, due to the emergence of my mobile money, I don't, you know, save my, my money. Um, in the bank any longer because there was, the, there was this time I was saving at um, Stambik Bank and every first quarter the deductions I get I, I think it's, it's quite unbearable so I just decided to ignore the banking sector and save my money in the bank and then preferably going in for the more money. So you've heard them. I actually like this gentleman. Uh, his position is very simple and straightforward. There's mobile money. I'm not keeping my money uh, in, the, in the bank, which is another thing that creates uh, a platform for discussion about getting this mobile money sector. People who like to keep their money in mobile money uh, into uh, banking regulation, the banking regulation system. But that's another debate for another time. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. let me welcome you once again. And find out from, let me start with you, Guta. Most of your members, I'm sure, bank with these organizations. I don't know. How did this action, uh, the announcement that the Bank of Ghana made yesterday, come to you and your members? Yeah, yeah. it's not interesting. Coming on the heels of um, KDM and Sunyane, BKM, the K. Mm. Uh, and then um, Piram of old and are now uh, mainstream banks being seen um, something of even criminality on it is a, a, a source of worry. Mm. And so because uh, it's about uh, the security, somebody was talking about um, being comfortable even saving with the uh, mobile mm -hmm. money and all that. Why is he saying so? He's talking so about security. You feel? You see he doesn't them. have enough confidence in the banking exactly. sector. Exactly. If you see the number of people who are now even investing at men's gold and all that, it will tell you how the drift is going. So I think we need a serious and conscious effort. I believe there's an institutional defect. Because how did this come in the first place? And how long have we seen this thing going on? Because if you look at the figures involved, just being taken by individuals mm. uh, at the expense of the uh, those of us who are saving there is it, it, just so grievous. And I'll, I'll come to for, yeah. for your response on how the Bank of Ghana is responding yeah, to the yeah. calls for persecution yeah. of the directors and, and, and so forth. But Mr. Nim, let me come to you and yeah. find out from you whether or not you've done any analysis about how this was this the, the sort of effects that this will have so far i mean we've listened to some people and our reporters who have been to the places uh been to these former banks uh, the premises are reporting that business is business as usual you have customers coming in fact there was somebody who even was going to deposit to make a deposit so one would have thought that this will trigger panic with rollers but okay. it looks as if people are quite relaxed about it people are seem to be okay yes uh -huh. I think it's about the, the, the communication put out there by the BOG. Mm. You know, once people realize that it's the BOG who is behind the new banks, or it's the Bank of Ghana that is taking over the new banks, that kind of assurance is there. Because mm. we know that Bank of Ghana is the, the mother bank for all the commercial banks, or for, so to say, the bank of last resort. So once it's the Bank of Ghana that is speaking and giving them, giving them that assurance, mm -hmm. okay, it was based on that that you realize that a lot of people are cool and they are okay. calm and going about their businesses. But I think we need to, as Doug just said, we need to look at the, our, uh, the systemic arrangement 
in terms of the how the regulator supervises uh, these commercial banks. Mm. Because today, people may have confidence, okay, because they realize that BOG is behind. behind but if them. the trend continues, yeah. it will get to a point that people will find very reluctant to do business with the banks. And okay. You see, if you take any economy into consideration, the very moment the financial sector is sick, it affects the, the total performance of the national economy. Because the financial sector becomes the heart of the, of the national economy. Mm. So once people... Uh, confidence in, in the financial sector diminishes. What it means is that it's going to affect even government's ability to mobilize resources okay. to undertake development projects by, by way of issuing domestic bonds and then the like, mm -hmm. or treasury bills to borrow on a short-term basis. So the financial sector is a very critical area that we need to look at it and ensure that we put in systems and mechanisms mm. that will not allow political manipulation and interference. And professionalism should be the order of the day. Mm -hmm. So it is very critical. So today, uh, I'm so happy that people are responding to it positively because Bank of Ghana is speaking yes. and we have trust and confidence in the Bank of Ghana. Mm. But if we allow this trend to continue, it will get to a time that the confidence that the people you know, have in BOG, once it, it diminishes, uh, then I'm, I'm sorry, it will find it very difficult. If you recall, the gentleman who just spoke proud to mm -hmm. the discussion said that he prefer saving his money with the, with the, uh, mobile, <coughs> the mobile money uh, system, system and me mechanisms. So, the effect is quite uh, mild. We, we have not seen so much people reacting negatively mm. to the situation. Uh, but I would advise mm. mm -hmm. that going forward, we need to put in mechanisms to ensure that certain... W which was what I was coming to, right. to you next on. Uh, what, what are these mechani mechanisms that you talk about? Exactly what can the Bank of Ghana do? Now, the Bank of Ghana, we've seen the change in leadership of the Bank of Ghana over the years. Uh, people have said that that could be a, a uh, contributing factor because you have a particular Bank of Ghana, which people would uh, associate with a certain party in power at the time. And so people are saying that, well, you have this Bank of Ghana governor who approved certain transactions or approved for certain, uh, gave certain approvals. And then immediately they are removed. Then you have another set that comes to then conduct the review that the Bank of Ghana is saying. I mean, what, uh, how does this all, you know, stand out to you? What, what, what is it that you see? And speaking of mechanisms that should be put in place, what are these? What are the suggestions on the table? All right, thank you, my dear. You see, there's a distinction between professionalism mm. and then politics. Per our constitution, our democratic arrangement, okay, it's the president that appoints the governor of the BOG, right? But once you've been appointed, you should know that you are working as a professional. Mm. And once you leave office, whatever distinction that you think, you know, it will follow you. Right now, the former governor is not there, and mm -hmm. then what you are hearing, if it's anything to, to go by, then mm -hmm. it means there's, there's a serious indictment on the professionalism on the previous governor and the team who were there before they issued such licenses to the banks, and as well as not monitoring uh, the, 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 the actual performance of, of the banks. Okay, so people should understand the that once you are professional, you need to act in a professional manner. You see, the, pro, the politicians are very uh, swift. And then let, let me put it that way. So once they are in power and they've given you an opportunity to, to lead an institution, you should understand that you are working as a professional. And your professionalism should stand tall hmm. in, 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 in whatever situation. Okay. Yeah, so Th that's the first. And then the second issue about the, the, uh, the reforms. I've worked before as a credit manager of a bank. One of the things I observe is that Bank of Ghana should beef up their, their supervisory department. I'm telling you, they need to get a lot of What are the lapses you think are, are, are there? Look, in, in terms of the staff strength, mm -hmm. look, I'm, I'm talking from experience where a BOG supervisory you know, visits your bank, yeah. and they are supposed to spend just three days. But within that three days, it becomes practically impossible for them to scrutinize almost all the reports submitted to BOG. Right, OK, okay. so they, they pick on one or two, and once they realize oh, your first report, the second is on track, then they assume. Then they're fine, and then they yeah, go then they away. Need to move on to another bank okay. because of the time sprint. So I, I don't understand why a BOG with all the resources available, you know, find it, should find it difficult to recruit more competent hands to help in that particular direction. If you can do that, all these issues will be corrected, and I think going forward, we will not have such a difficulty. Okay. That is not to suggest that it may not occur because in the human <laughs> setup and the human institution will be. Well, you know. that's a very easy excuse to say that, well, let's do it, but we know that it won't work. But anyway, let me come to you uh, uh, no, uh, <laughs> and find out from you. Uh, have you had any responses? I mean, has this created any sort of uh, response from your membership? Are they complaining to you? What are they saying? Or is it, you know, no, I mean, uh, are, they not, are, are they banking with different organizations? 
Yeah. Um, you see, this thing did not start today. We've gone through the mill and um, it is continuing. Uh, it started with the Unibank and then Capital Bank. And mm -hmm. I think people are getting used to um, the, the system. Okay, and you think that's why own. the response exactly. has not been as, uh, exactly. uh, as panicky as exactly. it was because the last time. Because people were even happened. anticipating that more banks will be loading. Okay. So that's why this thing has come. But then, prudent as traders are, don't forget that we've been there before, mm. early 80s. Okay. Um, the, the trading community, the, uh, the so the so-called commoners and all that have their way of doing things, hmm. and they will surely have um, very um, serious options apart from the the banks, hmm. and so they will be relaxed and then be thinking. But if um, um, care is not taken hmm. and um, we, we we play with these things, okay. Um, it, 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 Let's come back to the calls for prosecution. Now they are there are people who sat or supervise these banks um, into their destruction or the destruction that we're seeing now. There have been several calls, and this morning on the Super Morning Show, for example, here on the on journeys, there are several people who are speaking and saying, you know, you can't just let these people go. After now we, The government is, is going to put in this amount. That is you and I. That's money from yeah. you and I. Uh, we can't just sit around for people who have supervised over this lot, for example, to just go walk, f walk free. They're calling for prosecution. And I'll put up the, the, the pictures of them. We'll, put up, we'll pull up that picture from uh, myjoyonline.com for you to have a, a look at all five directors of the banks and the calls that they should be prosecuted. You've had the response from the Bank of Ghana, the, 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 the lady that we just, uh, whose sound we just played, uh, saying that they're going to do the review and send the document or information, whatever information there is, uh, to the appropriate state authorities. When you hear a response like that from the Bank of Ghana, indeed, people have said that they themselves should be sanctioned. I mean, when you hear comments or the response, the sort of response that we've heard from him, from her, what sense does it give you? And what do you make of uh, what should be done to these people? Well, uh, I'm not a lawyer. I may not understand the legal implications. But I think this is not the first time globally, even in the United States, when the Obama took over administration in the United States, there was so much difficulty. Most of the banks were going through some difficulty and there was a bailout. But before then, I think somewhere 2001, 2002, there was a company called Aero, an oil marketing company in the United States. And there was a serious uh, financial malfeasance where the auditors are artisans, you know, they manipulated figures a whole lot. At the end of the day, the American government looked at their own financial sector laws, they reviewed it, and they came out with the us, the Sabines Act. And I think thereafter, most of the executives were sanctioned per the laws of the land, mm -hmm. and then they were prosecuted accordingly. So, borrowing or learning from that experience, I am of the view that yes, we, we can equally do the same just to send a signal to people that if you have the opportunity to lead an institution as a director, as a manager, you don't do things on your own. You need to play the game according to the standard, according to the rules, according to the laws of the land. Okay, if we can do that, then I, I, I still serve as a deterrent for future managers of institutions. And then I think going forward, we are not likely to have the repeat of what we're experiencing now. Okay, let me put up, let, let, let's have a look at the, 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 the pictures of uh, the, the directors there. Uh, let me go through these names for you. Um, Stephen, uh, Stephen Boji, he's, a, he's with the Construction Bank. And uh, we have Osei Asafweje, who is with Royal Bank, the director for Royal Bank. Then we have Dr. Dufour Jr., who is a, with the Unibank, the director for Unibank. John Reader, director for Sovereign Bank. Uh, Mike Nyinaku, who is the director for Bay Bank. For these five people, there have been calls that, you know, you can't just let them off the hook. They will have to uh, answer some questions. Uh, Doc, what do you say? Yeah, um, I think we have to adopt some prudence because I, I, I believe some of them are just employed as CEOs and all that. But as to how the bank SM w was formed, uh, is where they have to look at who um, registered even the bank. So I believe there's a serious um, institutional defect. In this case, Bank of Ghana uh, has not worked. And then there might be uh, some sort of connivance of this, the kind of huge withdrawals and all that. It cannot just happen. Mm. There, there is a connivance and there should be sanctions 
for um, whoever was involved at that time of those any transactions that happened. The criteria of um, registering banks and all that need to be um, looked at, and um, I think we need serious reforms. We what, what's that, what, 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 for example, serious reforms like? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what do you suggest? No, um, if I say reforms, uh, probably my, my brother can even talk yeah. uh, more, but we are talking about the processes of registering a bank and the monitoring thereof. Okay. If we do not have it, because we, we should build institutions, as everybody has been saying, mm. our institutions are simply not working. Mm. And so we need um, a, a serious um, reform so that uh, it cannot just be easy for somebody, a just simple connivance. Because if you say that somebody was able to use a forged document mm. and all that, it means that um, the system didn't even cross-check itself. We need a complete um, um, re 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 reforms at this point. Normally, um, people are saying that is the proliferation of uh, many banks. banks. If that's not the issue. You don't think that's no, the no, no. Normally, I don't want any measure that suppresses the trade of money. But for the monitoring there, uh, of it, because if even the banks are five, and then the monitoring is not yeah. enforced, they will still, they will still have sure. be come the back to the same but when, problem. When, um, you don't forget that the proliferation of uh, many banks during 2000, that saw most of us growing. Okay. The, the banks competing so with So for you as business that. people, when we have a lot of banks, it works for you because then I guess you get competitive uh, yeah, interest rates, etc. A, 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 a bank that is worth being called a bank. Lending rates as well exactly. works for you. Exactly. Uh, okay, so you are all for allowing the banks to thrive, but, but uh, there has to be monitoring. Exactly. Uh, let's get on the grounds. Uh, as you are well aware, the Consolidated Bank now uh, has open for business. Ebenezer Sabote is uh, on, on the line with me right now. He has been to some offices of some of these banks. Uh, Ebenezer, what, what can you report? Hi, Gifty. Currently, I'm at the Beige Bank, East Legon branch. And here, I can see that some one or two customers came in and they were attended to by the staff of the bank. Before I got here, I went to the head of the city at the airport city. And over there, I saw some uh, management, I mean, the JPMD of the bank with some officials of JPMD going into a meeting. Actually, I tried to have an interview with them, but they declined. So they entered into a meeting, and the meeting has been going on for, I can see, the past three hours. I don't so know. Who, who is meeting who? The management of the bank and some officials of JPMD at the bank head office at airport. So right from there, I left to one of the banks here at Six Legon, where some customers were attended to. But earlier, as I was there, some when they came out, they were assuring the customers that their money are safe and they should continue to stay with the bank. The bank is not going to be, I mean, big bank again. It's going to be a consolidated bank, but this time around, very strong and with a solid, I mean, financial capacity. What what do you? I don't know if you've been able to speak to any of the um, uh, customers who are coming in. You say one or two. It tells me that it's not uh, as busy. Is it that it's that's how not. that particular branch usually is, or is it that people can't be bothered? It, 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 it's not that busy. I mean, it looks like a normal office. I can even count the number of customers who came in there. I mean, they were normally like about eight or six. Yes. Right. And you know, because the place is not that busy, the client, uh, the staff of the bank were able to sit them down and then they were having a chat with them, a normal chat with them, just assuring them that their funds are safe. I even tried sitting with one of them, but the customers, the staff, you know, they were saying that they want to serve their customers. So okay. I should give them that too. So quickly I moved out from there, trying to speak with officials okay. of the KPMC and they also declined an interview with them, mm. saying that they will issue a release as and when they are ready. Right. Ebenezer, you've been to several other banks, uh, and you've been doing this since morning. Yeah. You could, you, yeah. So, so what you can basically confirm is that there has not been no, there hasn't been anything like a panic. There has been, uh, no, there hasn't uh, been a, a drone of panic like, with rollouts. No, nothing no, like there, that. No, no, I, I, I haven't seen any. Because I went to more than eight of um, banks since morning, and you know, I even okay. went to the sovereign bank head of it, where very soon it will be the head of it for the Ghana Consolidated Bank. Okay. But there too, the place has been calm. I, I can barely see any people. All right. Customer All right. Kind of, yeah.
Uh, Evan, thank you so much uh, for the update. Evan is a sabote there, has been uh, coming around trying to look at the branches, the various branches of the now consolidated Bank Ghana. Uh, he's saying that really it's business as usual, if you like, even less business. People are just sitting at home believing and trusting that their monies are safe with these banks and basically uh, that's it I, I will come back and wrap up with the men i have here in the studio but let me take you to kumasi earlier this morning we went round there as well have a look closed customers came in early in the morning to try and transact business but security men over there had to communicate to this uh, customers that a bank will open at one obviously communication didn't go down to these customers who um, had come there to do business and currently here at unibank it seems the communication is it's the same and a lot of customers since morning have been coming in uh, to try and do business with the bank but um, the same communication is being put out to them that it will open at 1 uh, p.m. And so here in Kumase the uh, situation is pretty the same because customers continue to visit these banks to do one business or the other but they are disappointed along the line. <laughs> No, I don't know. Me, I didn't get any um, person to explain anything to me. I met only the street woman, then she told me I should wait one o'clock. So what are you doing now? I, I have to leave now. You're going to have uh, no, no, no. If I didn't get any bank to sort me out, I have to wait for until the one o'clock. Why? Because I don't have any money to, to go back to the house, then tomorrow I'll come back. So I have to eat. I was coming to take some money. That's when I came. They shut up. And I don't know. Um, you were not communicated to that this bank will open at one? No. That I don't know. I don't know about. You didn't receive any text message? No. But are you aware that the bank has been taken over by um, the... Um, yeah, the I, I, I got to know that yesterday. Yeah. I got to know that yesterday. Just... Well, in any case, it's, uh, it's positive to me because I'm owing somebody and I'm supposed to come and deposit that money. It is I don't have any problem. Only I can have a problem. So, so me, it's a plus to me. For now. I was coming to pick up a form this morning, but when I came, they said I should come in the afternoon at exactly one. Uh, what form is that? So it means you are not coming to transact uh, financial business here? No, nah, I'm not coming to do any transaction. I was coming to pick up a training college form. So I don't know, I'm just hanging around till the time is due, then I'll come. Thank you. Hey, Anna, your company, UK Chemicals, is your save. And now I'm just saying, but then I'm going to say, yeah, you're too much, I'm ready. But I'm going to have to check the price. My friend, Director Bonamani. Ah, okay. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Saying that you're 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 saying so the final uh, customer says that he's got some uh, things to clear at the port and he needs to uh, make some withdrawal so he can go clear his things at the port, but he's unable to do that. But let's find out from uh, Prince of Pierre once again, because it's past one, right? Well, 41 minutes past three. The bank has been open, I'm sure. Uh, um, uh, Prince, can you confirm that? Yeah, I guess I can confirm that the uh, banks have been opened and uh, customers have been able to uh, transact the business with the with the various banks, then I should say that they are still um, going there in their numbers to transact business uh, with the banks. Okay. Um, earlier, a lot of them had to uh, wait um, until uh, bank officials came to tell them to go and come back at 1 p.m. when the bank will open. So um, business has started. This well, here in Accra, it's not been, we, we've not seen a lot of people uh, trooping in to make any withdrawal or stuff like that. We've seen a few persons, a few customers going in and out. What is the situation in Kumasi? Yeah, in Kumasi, it's pretty much the same. Not so many people, um, after the morning, they, they had the explanation that um, the bank, things are well with the bank, your deposits are okay. 
So not so many people are coming in. After the time I was checking with the, um, the, the three banks that are available in, uh, in, in, in Kumasi, few people are going there. And when they go, they are able to transact their business. They are able to take as much as they want to take. And the most of them I spoke to tell me that they are not going to change banks. Um, that was the speculation earlier. Uh, but earlier they had the um, they were afraid that because of what is happening, their deposits will be affected. So they wanted to change their banks. But after they went into the banks and officials with them, they are okay and are going to keep their accounts with these banks that they are already um, doing business with. So okay. over here in Kumasi, everything is cool. Prince, thank you so much. Prince up here there with updates from Kumasi. Let me come back to my guest here in the studio and wrap up that conversation. Mr. Enim, once again, I'm coming to you. What would you like to see going forward or what do you expect to see uh, in the banking, in the finance sector going forward? Uh, yeah. So what has happened? Sure. I think going forward, the uh, Bank of Ghana should ensure that um, they supervise the commercial banks in a manner that will you know, expose any potential risks. Mm. You know, and we we'll equally advise potential banks that would like to, you know, participate in the Ghanaian economy. And when they are coming, they should come clean. Uh, mm. You know, they shouldn't hide anything from the regulator. But is that their call to make, or is it the regulator's call to make, or the regulator's job to ensure that these banks coming in are clean? It is the responsibility of the regulator, but I'm equally calling on the potential banks too. That once you, are, you want to do business in our economy, come clean, come so clean. that you don't create. Uh, uh, well. That if they don't know that they should come clean in the first place. That's <laughs> if it has to take a second party uh, for them to know. Uh, Doc, that won't be your final word, but your final mm -hmm. word on this particular matter. What will the business community, I mean the trading community, want to see going forward dealing with uh, issues like these? Uh, we want effective control by Bank of Ghana. All this that we are talking is about control. And it is their mandate to do it. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't believe in weak institutions and, and tinted with corruption because without corruption, these things cannot happen. Because mm. nobody can do this in isolation. No bank can register itself in isolation. Mm. So it's, uh, there's some sort of um, connivance. I think we need a complete overhaul of the whole system and all that and make um, um, even uh, uh, if a system works, mm -hmm. nothing even goes around it. You understand? And so we have to make a, build a very a good system and then ensure of uh, um, enforcement and monitoring. Okay. And that's all. That's, that's the all that the, the uh, business people like you are expecting. Exactly. Otherwise, okay. uh, uh, we don't, if you don't feel secured, then we have a way also. Because business people, we have, we've been there before, 19, early 80s and all that. Okay. And people knew how to use their money uh, prudently okay. apart from the banks. Well, therefore, yeah. setting up a lot of banks because then it gives them better lending uh, rates and then it helps their business. They're basically saying that it's about regulation rather than cutting down on the number of banks. So who are the new officials taking over the management of the consolidated bank? I'll give you that detail, but let me just quickly let you know that I've been having this conversation with Amate Enim, who is a finance expert. He's with the Policy Initiative for Economic Development. He's been helping us with some analysis on the situation so far. So thank you so much for coming. And I've also been here with Dr. Joseph Obeng, who is president for the Ghana Union of Traders Association. He will stay with me a little longer because we, we got to address the situation uh, between the Nigerian uh, spare parts dealers in Kumasi and Ghanaian spare parts dealers. But look at these, the, the, these details. That uh, It actually contains uh, information about who is taking over the banks that have been consolidated, so to speak. The new head of the consolidated bank, Daniel Wilson Addo, was the former deputy managing director of United Bank for Africa, and he was also appointed as Managing Director of UBA Tanzania. Daniel Addo was a pioneer in staff of UBA Ghana, who assumed the role after seven years of dedicated service to the bank. He was the first Ghanaian to assume the position of MD and CEO within the UBA group. Mr. Addo was also the former Executive Director of the First Atlantic Bank. He is a chartered accountant with 17 years post-qualification experience and a former member of the Technical and Research Committee of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana. He has also served as a member of the Institute Task Force on Convergence to International Financial Reporting Standards. Daniel holds an MBA in Finance from the Manchester Business School, UK. 
Now, here's a breakdown of the other executives who will take care of the other entities that make up the Consolidated Bank. Simon Donu, former MD of GCB, would manage Unibank. Alex Dodu would be the Consolidated Bank Director in Royal Bank as its MD. Madam Kesua Brown will be the Consolidated Bank's Director responsible for the Construction Bank. Babatunde Ampa would handle Beige Bank and Reggie France would act as lead advisor for the Consolidated Bank. KPMG would also be acting as receivers for the new entity. little bit of information for you there about the Ghana uh, the consolidated bank of Ghana you can get on my joy online for more information on that